Okay, trucks assembled. Extra power. One of the things I forgot to do in assembling the trucks is I forgot to put right here on the one with the uh, insulator. Screw comes up from the inside. Fortunately, it's easy to put in. So you just take the bottom off, take the uh, shaft out, put the screw in. And then it's kind of tricky to put it in place because you got to put this nut on here. The other thing you got to do is you got to put some way to get power from it. Now I looked in the box of all the parts I took apart and there was not exactly what I wanted. And definitely this GP20 had been opened up because somebody used... What the heck were they thinking? This here... is a button made of brass and that was soldered on to this little brass clip we got took care of that all right now this is the gp20 so i made a copper pickup plate right here just took some sheet copper put a hole in it so i could put the screw through it i had to put a copper washer under here so that this thing would stay in place and this is what gathers truck or truck power and this one here gets power in the factory assembled way okay so like i said there's gonna be three wires the back one's gonna be black front one's gonna be red there's gonna be three leads so we're gonna get power the way it is factory assembled plus we've got our extra power pickup and that's what we did on that sd24 works awesome now we are going to, as you can see, I put on an initial coat of my Contrast Blood Angels Red, which both of these are going to be painted in. This went on by a brush. This is the first coat over the primer. I needed to do that so I could start work on this because I can touch this up after the fact now. Now it's in place. Okay. I'm going to put in here this Johnson 6 pole. 24 volt rare earth magnet super strong motor this thing has got ridiculous power at a quarter of the voltage on so at about four volts i can't pinch it and stall it you know, four or five volts can't pinch this and stall it it's that strong now, why does it need to be so strong? Well, we're probably going to use a hose. Because I, fortunately, once bought a bunch of good hose to mate these two shafts like I did in the, in the other one. And a friction fit. Friction fitting is a totally sound concept. It's a good, it, and it's a good thing because it makes it easy to take apart. This motor may turn out to be way too powerful for this. And after testing it and stuff, I can change my mind. I doubt it, though. Its low-speed control is off the charts. It is a beauty. I'm going to put it in both of these two. Now, this is a big... This is a big motor. This is the about the limit of what you can put inside a shell. I mean, you cannot put this inside, say, a modern scale width hood it's just slightly too big but in this brass one fits perfect and she's a beauty she's nice and quiet and just at it draws very little power and its torque is off the charts so that's going to be fantastic we're going to make a motor mount so get it lined up perfect we're going to get all we're going to put our little pc board we'll just do the, the uh, glue the pc board on top get all of our wires collected on that board and when we want to go DC, DCC after the contest is over super simple because I'm going to put two leads up from the motor onto the PC board and all of the different power leads will collect on the PC board when it's time we undo the two motors put 
put the DCC to the PC board, DCC motor out to the motor, good to go. That's how simple this is going to be. First, we got to make it qualify. And that means it's going to have to negotiate those switches. And it's a brass locomotive. That may be tricky. Sometimes these things don't want to cooperate, no matter how smooth it is. Right now, it is super smooth. I can move these gears, and the wheels are moving. Just like that. Just like that. It's, it's, it's looking good. So, back to the uh, truck installation. Forgot to put this screw inside on both of them. But, I've got it in there now. Just take the back cover off. Lift out the wheels, which are now securely in the frames. So then we lift out the uh, shaft, put this in. And this time I'm going to put the nut on. When I do this one, I'm going to put the nut on. And I'm going to... I'm going to get it mostly into position before I, uh, because this, this took a lot of finger twisting. But basically, okay, now I'm, I'm starting to see, it's day 15, it's end of day 15. And we have three locomotives which are operational for as far as their mechanisms go. We've got two that are not quite ready, but are close. Now that SD7 is suspect. It um, has failed the test a couple times now, so it's going to have to come apart again. It has failed the um, track negotiation test, and I think it has a skidding axle. That's something we can deal with. We'll get to it. If we cannot, I have a backup plan. I have another locomotive that I can substitute. I don't want to, but I can. Now, the other thing is, my little girl told me that I should name a locomotive after our most beloved kitty who died a few years ago. This GP20 is going to be called Rascal. Get the name. Not every locomotive gets the name, but that one gets the name. Now I got one other thing I got to say there. So in my despair of not being able to find fans for anything, I fabricated fans a while back, and then I thought they looked stupid, and I decided I didn't want to, I wasn't going to use them. Then I changed my mind, and I thought, uh, let's just try one. I went through the trouble of making them. So here's what we got. This is my Dayton Phoenix 63-inch fan. Now you're saying, well, Dayton Phoenix doesn't make a 63-inch fan. But I model the future, so this fan's from the future. Ta-da! Pretty sweet, huh? Okay, you want to see the parts for that? I'm going to show them to you. What I got is I took some acrylic. And I made two circles. And I centered them on each other. And then I made their their uh, border. I don't know what it is. One millimeter or something like that. I printed these. I 3D printed these. For the grills. This is paper. I laser cut these. I mean, I... Design this in Inkscape, and then I laser cut this, but I could also use my Cricut Craft Cutter. And then I spray painted it silver. Okay, they cut out. Here's the acrylic piece. Basically, I made a ton of these, because they don't all turn out. The ones towards the middle turn out better. And then, so, clip them off, clip them, get them in here, kind of glue them in place. Not all these circles are good. This one looks like it's not quite round. And then I took some styrene to make, the, like the Dayton Phoenix fans have. They've got these little mounting pieces on them. Then I took a piece. I was cleaning out the crumb tray on my laser, and there were these little tiny pieces of acrylic from places I had cut screw holes in, this, in the Colossus 1 turntable. And I saved a couple of them. So I glued that on there. And I'm going to take a piece of white glue, and I'm going to glue the fan onto that spot. That's my fan. 
Because the shortage of fans is is totally real. And I'm getting worried. This GP20 that we're working on, I have now, through my research and photographs, I've determined you can use three flared fans. Two on the, uh, the big fan. And so, we've all seen these guys. The GP20, okay. So, GP20. We've seen them with flared fans here and here. Winterization hatch here. I was concerned that this top one, this is a fan I cannot get. Then, I took a picture... A long time ago, I got a picture of the Dakota, Missouri Valley, and Western. They had a Santa Fe GP20 they took into their shop. I got a picture of it before and after, and when it came out of the shop, flared fans. When they replaced the fans, they took the dynamic brake fan, and they made it a flared fan. So, I have two really, really good photo wetch fans that are flared. That that was the only fans I could get in a pure accident. I got a train show. Still don't have this one. Now I've got some of these that are flared fans. But next to those photo etched ones, they're not going to look so good. I don't know if I want to attempt to build a Dayton Phoenix fan that is the size. I don't know if I could get away with putting my 63 inch fan on here. I mean, it would be cool, but it's huge. I would get points for, for it being scratchable. So that's a plus. So I may have to go with that because fans are just not to be found. And I'm, I'm almost in panic mode on fans other than I know that I can make more, but can I make more in the 15 days that are left? Actually, 14 days now. Um, I can now justify having flared fans. I can also justify the fact of having a, an aftermarket fan because there's a company called Dayton Phoenix that makes aftermarket fans. And on something like that, uh, two of their, there's three fans. They have a two fans for three replacement. So you can take all three of these off and put two in its place. I may use that on one of the other, probably that Bachman Plus, because its fans are not very good. And, and, and these Dayton Phoenix fans I made, uh, I made a lot of them. I made like 25 of them. So it's possible. That's where we're at. So I'm going to keep trudging on. Now, I didn't show you how I actually painted these. There is a chance that I might do the painting of the locomotives live. I got the camera, got the internet, speed, and I have now a machine capable of, of handling a video of the size necessary for you to see the details live. So I'm thinking about it. That's where we're at on the end of day 15. I'm going to do a little more tinkering here. And then tomorrow, we got to get, get on down with it. Time's running out. we got to get down to the point where we are starting to do the detailing. 